It started in 1970. Rip City. The Portland Trailblazers. A city that did fall in love with their team. Not gonna lie. 1970s, they had the white, the red, a little bit of the black. They really haven't changed their uniform that much in the past uh, 60 years almost. <laughs> almost 60, you know what I'm saying? Like, But they're 1977 champions with Bill Walton. After that, they were just chasing what they had in 1977. People have come, people have go. They've had number one draft picks. They've had high draft picks. They've had high, uh, highly touted free agents. Superstars like Clyde Drexler. You know, uh, Clyde Drexler brought them to the finals, but didn't exactly win the finals. They've been to constant Western Conference finals. They've been in the playoffs damn near since the conception of their franchise. They were the first ones to get Arvidas Sabonis from overseas. Um, Cause he was already a legend overseas. They just got him late. The NBA got to him late and the Blazers got to him first. You had the 2000s, the Jail Blazers. You know, the team that was rough on the edges, getting a little bit of legal trouble. And then from the early 2000s, they get into the mid 2000s with Brandon Roy around 07. 08, they draft LaMarcus Aldridge and then they have the Brandon Roy, LaMarcus Aldridge, Greg Oden combination. The number one draft pick that never quite made it. His knees gave out before he can actually play basketball for real. But Brandon Roy was the guy and he was the bridge for the Trailblazers of today with Damian Lillard. Um, Damian Lillard had LaMarcus Aldridge at first too. And now LaMarcus is gone. Uh, one NBA championship, market size, medium, fan interest, one, zero, zero percent. <laughs> Chauncey Billups. Boop, boop, Billups, as the, De as the Detroit uh, announcer used to say. Um, 6'3", 200, old school game. Mind you, Chauncey Billups had an old school game when he was young, when he had hair. He's always had an old school game, which is why he lasted so long in the NBA because people flame out sometimes. Uh, he had one of these, uh, also he has a championship with the Pistons, but he has one of these step back moves. This was before the Harden type step backs, the Steph Curry type step backs. This was what a step back looked like in the early 2000s. You know what I'm saying? Then we got Clyde Drexler. He was the man of the Trailblazers. If you're old enough, if you think of Clyde Drexler, you think of the Portland Trailblazers. He is the face and almost was, and almost remained the face until Damian Lillard, honestly. Um, six, seven, very slight build, 200, but, well, he's like 215, but, Still had a slight build, can jump over you, put it over your head, dribbling skills enough just to get to the basket, can shoot the three, shoot the mid range. Um, he was the main scorer for the Blazers. He scored over 25 points sometimes. He was basically the guy of the 90s. Uh, him and Jordan was going face to face. He, he, late, he later went on to the Rockets and ended up winning his championships with the Rockets. Hakeem Olajuwon, Kenny Smith. That was honestly one of the original super teams if you think about it, because like the Celtics had older people like Ray Allen, KG, Paul Pierce, and that's what the Rockets did with Clyde Drexler, Hakeem, Kenny, Charles Barkley, shit like that. So he was one of the clutch guys in the 90s also. Um, if you if you were in 1990, let's say five, and you heard Clyde Drexler, he would be the top five player of the league. Keith Van Horn, 6'10", can shoot his ass off. Um, 
Played for the Nets, went to the finals with Jason Kidd, didn't quite win against the Lakers, can uh, finish at the rim, but doesn't necessarily go to it like that. Um, it's more like uh, you pass it to him near the rim and he finishes. But he's just mostly a shooter. Catch and shoot is out of this world. He catches shoot the three, catch and shoot the medium. He's not exactly gonna dribble and pull up on you like Kyrie or something, but at the same time, you pass him the ball, he's gonna finish for you. Zach Randolph. Now, Zach Randolph is an OG. Not only is his style of play OG, because he has post moves and he'll hit a mid range on you, but that's about it. He's not gonna dunk it over your head. He's not the fastest guy on the court. He's 6'9, 250. You're not gonna push him around. But at the same time, he's a scorer. He's definitely gonna score over 20 points. And he's a threat once he gets on the block. You get him on the block, it's a problem. Because he's gonna figure out a way to make it. It's uh, almost a la Julius Randle a little bit. When he gets near the rim, he just kinda, I don't wanna say throws it up there, but he has his ways of uh, overcoming his vertical challenges. <laughs> um, also an OG, you know what I'm saying? He's uh, in the streets. He was part of the 2000s Jailblazers. He's one of the reasons they were called the Jailblazers. But at the same time, he's on the Memphis Grizzlies. He was on the Memphis Grizzlies, and he's like a really big part of Memphis because he just be in the hood, bro. Anyway, LaMarcus Aldridge, 6'11". Was drafted by the Portland Trail Trailblazers, not the Jailblazers. Um, played with Brandon Roy. He was a power forward. He was a center. He had hella post moves, post moves out the ass. Um, he could shoot the mid range, and as he later on developed, he was able to shoot a three or two. But he's like 6'11, 250. He's not going to jump the highest. He's not the fastest on the court, but he's going to finish. At the rim, he has a little bit more vertical than his counterpart, Zach Randolph. He's a little bit taller. He doesn't play as good as defense as Zach Randolph, but he has a little bit more offense. He's a little bit more versatile. While Zach is in the post, he could be near the mid-range or three. Or post up, Danny Green. Now, Danny Green is a very good three-point shooter. Very good. Catch and shoot out of this world. But... One of the main reasons he stayed in the league for so long and one of the main reasons that he is basically always playing, it's not like he gets signed to a team and then he's just like on a team. No, like once he gets signed to a team, he's on the court because his defense will never leave him. 6'6", six, six, like 210, his defense is out of this world. And it's not like a defensive player of the year type thing. It's just more so you affect the game crazy. Jonas Valanciunas, center, power, I mean, power forward. He can go to the rim, he can rebound. Fred Van Vliet, 5'10", can shoot, pass a little bit, doesn't really go to the rim. Pat Connaughton, 6'5", can shoot, catch and shoot, that's it. Chris Boucher, 6'10", still developing, can rebound, do a little bit of blocking. RJ Hampton, Still developing, but he's getting better. 6'5 combo guard. Derek Fisher. You should already know Derek Fisher if you know Mamba. 6'1 can shoot the ball. Very smart player. Isaiah Hartenstein can shoot seven foot. And then there's Byron motherfucking Russell. His name got tainted by Michael Jordan from the shot. But he's had a few shots of his own. Byron Russell wasn't exactly John Stockton or Carl Malone on the team, but he was one of those guys that they depended on. Byron Russell was no slouch. Even though he may not be getting too much PT on this team, he's a very, very good backup if anyone were to get injured because Byron Russell is very just um, consistent. He's not as consistent as like 25 points a game, but like for the minutes that he gets and the production that he does, it's consistent enough for him to make a difference. So we have the head coach. It's Chauncey Billups. B -b -b Billups controlling the team at point guard and the coach. Mid-range scoring, three-point scoring, and layups are the strength. 
Weaknesses are steals, ball handling, and blocks. I would also add a weakness that would be perimeter and defense.